We be live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. We're going to be covering the news, specifically news around religion, all the nonsense about religion. Susie, today's news is it like funny, wholesome, tragic, we shocking. Are mostly gonna. It's it's kind of like okay. We have we have two news up front, like that are. We're, that we would support or not support, but like we can kind of like dunk on, you know what I mean? Nice. And then the last two news, well, I, th I think the first news we support, second news we can dunk on, it's funny. It's kind of like hard of. Third and fourth news are like serious for sure, but it also mm. gives us an opportunity to call out some nice. barbarism, frankly. Awesome. Good. Good. And we like um, to do that here. We like to just be full throated. Call it what it is. Okay. the The live chat is already very full, so thank you guys for being here. Please make sure you like like the stream right at the beginning of the show. If you like at the beginning of the show, it's just gonna YouTube is gonna go grab more people and bring them here. So please go ahead and like the stream right now. Also, also, hey, do you think hello, people of the Republic, listening from work today? That's amazing. But here's the I, thing, I, guys. That has I, a good ring to it. Hello, people of the yeah, Republic. People. I like that. Who came up with it? Somebody came up with it, and now it's, it's catching on. I like it. I like it. Um, I'm going to uh, keep an eye on our monetization just to see what we say is going to trigger YouTube's algorithm. Uh, but we don't care if we get demonetized. Do you know why, Susie? Because we have been graced by an angel, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> angel LR gave us $100 saying, good morning, everyone. I hope we all enjoy this stream. Well, Thank damn, you. Rachel. I mean, not Rachel, Angel. You know you're the best. This is insanely generous. And thank you for supporting our show. It means so much to us. It's because of so supporters far. like Angel that we can do what we do. Yeah, so far we're monetized, so that's good. Okay, but we're gonna keep an eye on that. But it's okay if we get demonetized. Angel has already uh, covered our monetization issues, so thank you so much for that. All right, and I so, love this. Oh, Wait, we have some good comments coming up first. David Costa is saying salam, Bahamagi. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's good. I love Salam. that like now our audience is just absorbing Persian slowly. Um yeah. if you want to go saying, really Persian, if you want to mm -hmm. go really, really Persian, because a lot of some Persians don't want to use Arabic Durud, yeah. Some Persians because Salam comes from Arabic into Persian. Um, but if you want to say be purely Persian, say Durud instead of Salam. This is how you virtue virtue signal, you guys. Yes, yes. This is this is Persian virtue signaling by like not using Arabic words and using you know just Persian. When words. I meet people from Iran and I say "durud," blah blah blah, people are like, "durud," like what the. Fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um Ronak is saying, Armin, why am I still banned from your Discord? We don't know. We don't moderate our Discord. Our mods moderate our Discord. If you are banned, you not it's probably because you violated the rules or you're being annoying. I'm just being honest. You've been um, a naughty boy or girl. I don't know. Darko just gifted five Atheist Republic memberships before we even started the show, which is amazing. Guys, make sure to use your new member emojis in the live chat, okay? That's one. Two, if you want to support our show to make sure that we can keep doing what we do all the time, please join, become a member. There's a link in the, the join button should be down there. And it's a great way to support the show and our community. And finally, Zaid is saying, Susie, remember to play Hava Nagila if we get shackles. Okay, so Zaid recently texted me something amazing. And it is <laughs> a conversation between him and our very own Seed of Iblis. And I didn't know that Seed of Oblis freaking shreds. Oh, wow. And he did a freaking badass shredding version of Hava Nagila. It, it's so good. I was screaming. 
we need to figure out how to do a soundboard. Like if we could have that play every time we get a shekels super chat, that'd be freaking amazing. Well, explain this so uh, people don't know what you're talking about. Well, Havan the Gila is like a very, very, it's one of the most famous like Ashkenazi Jewish songs ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you is heard it copyrighted? You the song, it's, it's probably it not copyrighted. copyrighted. I mean, it's so maybe a certain version of it is copyrighted, but if you have a cover, that's not copyrighted. Um, okay. If you heard the tune, do you know what it was? Yeah, so, but it's that metal. Let me check if we just copy. We might have gotten copyrighted just by you singing it. Oh, no. All right, all right. We should we should move forward. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Oh, so wait, guys, um, Danielle, Muslim here, yeah. but you cool. An early oh, Eid Mubarak to you, my friend. Muslim for now. We'll see about that. <laughs> we could fix that. We could fix that for you. Just stay, just stay around here. <laughs> oh. okay. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Or maybe it works out the other way around. Maybe we will become Muslim. I don't know. Um, all right, so can we move forward? <laughs> yes. All right, can I clap for the first news? Yes. Okay. First news. First news. F- France battles Islamist infiltration by suing line student in hijab row. In France, in a stark defense of French secularism, Prime Minister Gabriel Attal has announced the government's intention to sue a high school student for falsely accusing a principal of assault following a confrontation over her headscarf at Maurice Revel Lissier. I don't know how to pronounce anything French in eastern Paris. Um at that school. The accusation led to the principal's resignation after he received death threats, highlighting the tension between France's secular laws and its Muslim community. Atal's firm stance, quote, the state will always stand with these officials from those who are on the front line faced with these breaches of secularism, these attempts of Islamist entryism into our educational establishments, underscoring the government's commitment to upholding laicite, aka their version of secularism, amid rising concern over Islamist threats. This incident not only reflects the ongoing debate over religious symbols in French state institutions, but also challenges faced by educators in navigating these contentious waters, further strained by recent Islamist attacks against teachers. So let's um, dig into this, and I will provide a little bit of background. Okay, so in France, since 2004, I think, the hijab has been banned within public schools. So if you are attending a public school, you are not allowed to be wearing the hijab. Now, especially if you're under the age of 18. So there was this student, and she was actually above the age of 18. um, And she was at school, on the school property. And um, it was her and two other friends. And the exact circumstances weren't clear, but they were wearing the hijab. And this principal goes over and tells them to remove it because it's against the law. Because the hijab has been banned since 2004 and the abaya was banned within the past like th- two years, two, three years. Um, So you're not allowed to be wearing the hijab or abaya in, in public school property. So, or and it's not even just the hijab, it is all religious symbols. You're not allowed to be wearing a Jewish skull cap. You're not allowed to be wearing a Sikh turban. None of it. Let's just be clear. Um, so the principal goes over to the girls and tells them to remove their hijab. And two of the girls comply. And one of the girls refuses. And according to the reporting, like attempted to intimidate the principal. Now, the alleged incident is that Th- this girl alleges that then the principal grabbed her on the shoulder and 
removed her hijab forcefully or attempted to remove her hijab forcefully. That's what she alleges. There was a government um, investigation and the government has ruled that this is completely false, that this did not happen. As soon as this alleged incident happened, the principal had to go into early retirement. He had to quit and go into hiding. There have been death threats against him and death threats against the school. The school has had to go under police protection. And the um, in after the government investigation, they're like, this isn't true. This is all false. And so now the government is actually suing this girl. They're suing her because they're like, this didn't happen. This isn't true. And what's so interesting is that there has been unequivocal support for this teacher in France. Wow. I'm talking the head of the socialist party has spoken out against them to the head of the, the like the far right parties have spoken out against them. The prime minister, I think Macron made a statement like there is unanimous support for this teacher. Like France, <laughs> France is taking this very, 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 very seriously because one France does not take threats to laicite lightly. They're very hardcore about their laicite. And particularly because there have been multiple teachers who have been murdered by Islamists within the past few years, and it has deeply scarred the French public consciousness. In 2020, Samuel Paty was a, a civics teacher who was beheaded, I'm talking full decapitation, full decapitation in the sidewalk of a Paris suburb because there was a girl who lied saying that she was in class when he was showing Charlie Hebdo cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad and asked Muslim students to leave. And she lied and she told this story and then she went to tell her parents and the parents told the local mosque and the local mosque started blasting his name, started blasting where he works. And then a freaking Chechen terrorist who had been a refugee living inside of France since he was around the age of six at the age now at the time he was 18. This freaking psycho went and then went to the school, bribed some of the students to identify the teacher, and then beheaded him straight up in the street before he was shot dead by police. Meanwhile, then that that psycho, his that freaking jihadi, his body was extradited to Chechnya where he was buried as a hero. Okay, and all of that originated because there was this student that lied on him. Samuel Patti's son, who's five years old at the time, will never have a father because the student lied on him. Then, in October of 2023, so very, very recently, this didn't get as much news coverage because of the Hamas attack, right? And there was so much going on. And also, like, after Hamas attacked, like, we saw this explosion of terrorism and lone wolf attacks around the world, right? So there's a lot that got lost in the mist. In October of 2023, there was another incident where another teacher was murdered in a knife attack by a former student who was an Islamist yelling Allahu Akbar. This happened less than a year ago. And so France is taking the safety of their teachers very, very seriously, because like the new prime minister said, that we stand with those officials who are on the front line faced with these breaches of secularism. Because, for example, if if as an element of secularism, and you can debate whether this should be the case or not, but right now on the books, as an element of France's secularism, you are not allowed to be wearing these religious symbols in public institutions, even school. Maybe you don't like it. You, that can be debated. But that's what's on the books and that's what's on the law. So if you're in the schools, that means that these teachers have to be the ones to enforce that law. 
That means that they have to be the ones enforcing laicite. That means is that if people don't like it, they're going to get the blowback first. They're going to be threatened first. And that's exactly what happened here. And I don't know, I think it's really good to see France being aggressive about this because here's the thing, like people might be like, okay, this seems a little overblown. Like there were, there was some, um, a Belgian, a Belgian NGO against Islamophobia that was writing about this. And they're in Belgium, by the way, cause I got, by, they got banned from France. Um, basically saying that this whole thing has been blown out of proportion. But, like, how can you say that when you literally are having teachers beheaded in the streets over lies? Like, that scarred the French consciousness so much. And then people said that France had a super overblown response to that. Because then, this was something that was already in the works, but at the time when Samuel Paty was beheaded, you know, people who have been at Atheist Republic for a while will remember that very shortly afterwards, Macron unveiled all these measures and new laws and new prescriptions against Islamist separatism within France. Very shortly afterwards. And that those are those are laws that were actually like already in the works for some time, but then this really gave like new urgency to it, right? And um so this is this is like a very serious matter, and people know that these lies can get people killed. Because it happened like so recently, right? I mean, how do you forget something like that? I, I will never be able to get the image. Because after Samuel Pati's murderer beheaded him in the street, he took a photo of it and posted it online. Like, I've, I can never get that image out of my mind. <laughs> and, um, and when it comes to the, the case of Samuel Pati and the, 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 uh, legal ramifications that have happened to the students who were, um, responsible for lying on him and then causing community incitement of hatred against him, I think the, the punishment to the students was woefully inadequate. Um, although there are the parents of, of those students who are responsible for spreading it throughout the community um, are also going to be receiving prosecution in a separate case. Um, anyways, I feel like I've been completely dumping. Armin, um, please, please chime in here. This... Two effects of this. First of all, now every time you know some of these Muslims would want to make a false accusation or to use because they the the Muslim community in many uh, Western or liberal countries because they don't have the power of the law like in Islamic countries they try to use intimidation and scare of violence as a way to silence people or to get people to bend to Islam to submit to Islam right. Um, and now this, if this backfires and they are the one who was actually, who are actually into because that was what they were trying to do with this teacher, like just spread like, oh, this teacher came and tried to remove my hijab. Now he has to be scared. Now he has to be worried about his life. And then he, you know, people are scared now to do these things because they see the reaction. And now the community in France has shown solidarity and they're not willing to submit. In fact, now. You are the one who are, you try to intimidate the, the teacher, but now this is happening to you. And I hope the Muslim community sees this and see that if they want to try to do this to people to try to get them to submit to Islam, um, they are the ones who have to actually submit to laicite because now the society is coming after them and they're going to sue them for all the damages and the threats and all the, you know, and again, this is the combination of using criminal law and civil law because this part suing them is civil law. If you cause hardship for people um, in countries where uh, they have a good legal system, they could sue you for that. They could ask for damages. So if you just make false accusations, now you are, um, you know, they can come after you. And so this is good. It, it sets a precedent for France. But I also hope this normalizes 
taking these kinds of measures for other liberal countries. Because what I like about France is that if they do something like stuff that other countries might think like maybe that's too much, when France like breaks the taboo around it, like break makes it now some other countries could refer to France as something that works or something that they have done. It doesn't seem as outrageous anymore. It doesn't seem as out of a question anymore because a country has done that and you could refer to it as an example. Like, for example, if Germany wants to do this or if Sweden wants to do this or if the UK wants to do this and somebody thinks that this might be too much, well, if France has done it already, then it doesn't seem as too much anymore. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. A lot of people think that they're very heavy handed, though. Yeah, well, if it if it produces results, here's the thing. I think a lot of people will continue to think that, but as Islamism takes more and more, uh, you know, control over different parts of Europe, as it goes into the education system or into politics and to the media, then those like a lot of people at some point are gonna be like, okay, uh, yeah, maybe that's enough. Let's copy France, you know. So. We'll see. We'll see how many people think that this is too heavy handed as more Islamism grows in Europe. And in I know. Europe. And I think it was like it really spoke for itself that like across the entire French political spectrum, people were like, no, we're backing this teacher. This is unacceptable because the same thing happens yeah. in 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 the uk there i mean i will never forget what happened at the batley grammar school a teacher had to go into hiding because of again supposedly showing drawings of the prophet or like prophet muhammad cartoons or something and that teacher and his whole family are still in hiding because of the threats against them in the middle of the uk like i think when the prime minister who used to be the education minister says that these officials are really standing at the front lines of Republican values. I think that's very salient. Like that. I never thought about it in those terms, but it's very true and they deserve being strongly defended. See, people have to understand that Islam is set to dominate. Okay. Even if it's not like that at the beginning, the, it's within the DNA of the ideology. Even if the Muslims themselves who carry the virus of Islam don't have that intention, it is within the DNA of Islam. These are these the good Muslims are the carriers of something. They might not be bad people, but they're carrying uh, an ideology that itself within its DNA has domination in mind, right? And as, you know, it, it it might be friendly, it might be like with peace, you know, peace loving, caring Muslims. But once it sits in within the population, at some point, when it comes to when it uh, when it gets a, a above a higher percentage, then it will start uh, changing and it starts going into the next phase. And it, it also has this effect on other religions as well. So a lot of religions that don't have domination in their DNA, I mean, all religions are bad, but some of them don't have domination in their DNA, as an effect of being against Islam or competing Islam or fighting against Islam, they rub against Islam and they become more and more like it. You can see that in, I don't know, Hinduism or in Christianity, a lot of people, um, Islam has that effect on them. And because they feel threatened by Islam, they copy Islam and they become you know, just as bad or just as dangerous. Again, I always say all religions are equally wrong, but not all religions are equally dangerous. Islam is by far the most dangerous with a huge, huge uh, distance from the second uh, most dangerous religion. Well, in the modern age, um, a huge body count as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, we got a couple of super chats. Yes, we got a couple of super chats and also a comment I wanted to address. Um, Gaijin American is celebrating his membership for 27 months. That's how you know Gaijin is an OG. OG. Um, saying, I know a pro-state atheist commie reverted on TikTok. A pro-state atheist commie? Oh, interesting. Gaijin, can you send this to me? That would be actually really yeah. interesting yeah, for so Armin to react to. Yeah, um, please. Send it. I, you know, there's something about 
I think there's like people that are attracted to authoritarianism. And right. if you're, I'm assuming this is like a tanky, maybe I'm wrong. And the, the, I mean, the I think it's the anti -wish. When you're talking about totalistic ideologies, I mm. see why it's attractive. Um, go it's ahead. also the anti-imperialism that they share mm -hmm. with Islam. The, the, the commie tankies and the Islamists, they're like, you know, when they, their hate for America and everything Western makes them, um, makes them allies, which I wrote an article on, by the way, if you want to read that. Um, okay. So then GJ is also celebrating his membership saying France, what about Christian Crocs, necklaces and tattoos? So I have no idea what the standard is for tattoos. Like if you have a <laughs> religious tattoo and you work in a public institution, I, I legitimately don't know what the legal standard for that is. My understanding is that the Christian cross necklace is also not accepted. That's my understanding. I'm not French. <laughs> yeah, let us know, French people. Immortal Wombat, a great username, gave us a uh, five euro super chat. Thank you. Thank saying you. good evening, my adorable fellow atheist. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so cute now. Um, <laughs> Uh, and Angie Unier gave a $2 super chat. Say, thank you as always. I have no words. It's mad. We do mm. live in a crazy world. Um, Beatrice gave us a 20 euro super chat. Wow, that's so generous. Thank you. Saying, sadly, Europe is bowing before Islam. Do you think, Armin, what, what do you think about that? I think it's a spectrum. It's not. I don't want people to treat it like as a as if it's a binary. Um, it's yeah. And, and when it comes to a spectrum, we're leaning more and more towards Islamization. But don't think like we're not. I don't want us to exaggerate. It's not going to be a caliphate. It's not going to become the entirety of law. It's not going to be based in Sharia or like some people fear monger. I mean, it doesn't have to be that bad for it to be extremely bad. I think like um, some people exaggerate. Yeah, in many places. So I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you as uh, Europe in a lot of places, Europe is bowing before Islam, but in a lot of places, it's not just like we saw this news. So there's resistance to it. But in many places, it, it, there's enough bowing it to Islam in Europe for it to be a problem worth um, fighting against. But again, it's not binary. It's not like it has completely taken over, or like it's going. And I don't think it will ever completely take it over. Even if, but Islam is such a toxic ideology that any amount of takeover is horrible and should be fought against. It's concerning. Uh, yeah. Emma is saying, I'm French. You can wear discrete religious symbols. What does that mean? And also, Emma, what is the policy on tattoos? What is the policy is, on tattoos? So I'm assuming if you have a Chris, Christian necklace, I think you could just like tuck it in. I think that would be okay, right? Uh, but yeah, if you have a, I think like in the same way, if you have a cross, like on your arm, but it's covered with your sleeves, then it's okay. But my my question is, like, what if you have a cross right here, like tattooed? Like, what? What's well, something to tells me you're less likely to be working in a public institution, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but what if it's okay? What if it's what if it's what if I have a cross here, right? Tattooed yeah. here. Yeah. I don't know. It, I don't know how strict uh, these institutions are because you know there's a lot of institutions where it's like you have to one you already have a uniform that's very formal or two if you have tattoos you have to cover them um like i like to cover my tattoos when i'm at work um and we got a super chat from gj saying didn't auto turk the og outlaw public hijabs in turkey did auto turk ban the hijab i obviously no i think i the think there did. was a i think there was not hijabs completely. I think there were certain uh, uh, types of hijab in certain places. I could look at. Um, I could look that up. Uh, yeah, I think like it wasn't okay. Define, okay, Aratorp did implement policies that restricted the wearing of the hijab. Insert. Yeah, I was correct. Okay, so. He didn't ban the hijab completely, 
but he did implement policies that restricted the wearing of hijab in certain public places, such as schools and government buildings, uh, as part of secu- uh, as part of his secularization efforts in the 1920s or 30s. So I was correct. He didn't ban the hijab outright. It was kind of something similar to France right now. Okay. And Emma has provided more insight. She's saying tattoos are okay. Crosses or other jewels are okay. Hijab is seen as too much and as proselytism. This doesn't seem consistent to me as a law, if I'm being honest. At all. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, what, what is deemed as like jewels versus what is deemed too much and proselytizing that's yeah i mean yeah i think it's uh, don't i think you should just make it a a law has to have a black and white element to it it can like it's not like a i think any form of religious symbol on you that could be publicly seen that should be banned in those areas that they want to ban it right no, exactly and that's why like, it doesn't sound like it is that way that's why i'm getting confused it should be that way yeah i think if like if we can see it that's banned i think that should it should just be black and white like that yeah um uh danielle is asking what's your advice to people planning to be ex-muslim that's a very good question danielle i'm uh, glad you asked that well first of all it depends on how old you are if you are not financially independent, I would, and you, you do actually apostatize, um, I would probably not come out to your family and talk about your criticism wow. or disbelief unless you are able to financially support yourself. Um, depending on what country you live in, I would also not be public. Um, you know, you have to always think about your safety first. You know about your physical safety better than I do. Um and I would say um, join a, a supportive community. So you could join the Atheist Republic community on Discord. The link is in the description. And we have tons of people in our Discord who are you know active all the time. And um, they can talk to you about your, your thoughts or your doubts or maybe a certain thing you're struggling with because we have a lot of young people in our community who live you know, all around the world in countries where, you know, maybe their family isn't supportive, but they're safe, or maybe countries where it's very, very dangerous to be ex-Muslim. And so they can give you a really wide variety of advice depending on your um, location and your circumstances. But I would say do not be public about it until you can guarantee your own personal safety. That That's what matters to us most. Um, and besides that, my advice is to be curious. If there's a question you have, go investigate it. It's okay. If there's something that doesn't sound right to you, like lean into that. Why does it not sound right to you? Why does something sound unbelievable? Why does something not make sense logically or is against scientific understanding? And just investigate, allow yourself to investigate, allow yourself ask questions. It's okay to look up information that's critical of both sides. Um, I think really just allowing yourself to be kind of like a little detective, I think is one of the most important things you can do in practice um, structured critical thinking. Do you have any advice, Armin? No, I, 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 I think that was perfect. Um, okay. Wow. We should, if we had more time, if Susie had more time, we should just have like a segment like a li- live streams where people come ask for advice from Susie and she just answers these questions. That was beautiful. Don't you think? Like, <laughs> we should get Atheist Republic to a point where we could get Susie full time. So we will have entire live streams dedicated to Susie ranting. And now another re- entire live stream that, based on the answer that she gave here, and uh, an other live stream that Susie just, I don't even come here as people ask questions and ask for advice. And Susie just, Gives advice. We should. We should. Like, my guys, Susie get Atheist Rant Republic to point. Yeah, Susie Rant my, and me, Susie. So Susie Rants and Susie advice. But my rants are just about like three things: like bad sex slash gender war nonsense, um, taxes, and progressivism. 
Well, it's like I those mean, well, three things. Of, well, there's a lot of that's those are three entire worlds. It's not like it's going to be repetitive. So, yeah, people are happy. People really ask you. Yeah, ask Susie. Okay, so guys, um, get a, get Aces Republic to a place where we could get Susie full time, and we will have Susie rants live streams and ask Susie live streams. Two different kinds of other than the news that we have. Okay, so subscribe and grow, make us grow this channel. Okay, so we could afford getting Susie completely on Atheist Republic. Anyways, we have to. Oh, we still have some. Super chess. Let's go through these fast. Yes. So Angel's just celebrating her membership for four months. We have had four months, if not more, since this angel graced our presence. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, and GJ gave us another super chat saying France has a bigger percentage of Muslim population, has has the biggest percentage of the Muslim population in Western Europe. That is true. Um and really quickly, Daniel is saying, I think I feel oppressed for being gay and judged for blasphemy. Let me tell you, there are millions of people around the world that feel the same way as you, Daniel. So I would, I think the best thing that you can do for yourself is to find community where you can feel a sense of belonging and a sense of connection and understanding from people who have been in a similar circumstance as you, because that's really good for our minds and our hearts. And so, yeah, join join our Discord. There's a lot of other ex-Muslim communities out there um, of full of people from around the world who've gone through different experiences. But, you know, I think you'd be surprised about how many people could relate to what you're going through. I know there are dozens and dozens of dozens of people in our community who can relate to what you're going through. Um, so yeah, you know, sending love to you. Um, <laughs> and Shami is sending a super chat towards the Susie rant fund. <laughs> The Susie yeah, segment. Yes, I would please. love to yes. do more streams. Yes. Would you? I would. I would. If I did streams, it would honestly be a lot of me going through and reading articles and stuff that I've been wanting to read for a very long time, but just don't have time. And just investigating right. like these different topics and articles together. Like there's this article yeah. by this um Egyptian Muslim reformer dude about how essentially the left ruined the Arab world um, that I've been wanting to read for a very long time, but I just don't have time. But I would like, if I had my own streams, I would like go through that kind of thing. I don't know if that'd be interesting to people, but that's what I would do. And it's my segment. I do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be, I would be, I would watch that for sure. Anyways, we should go to the next news. Can we clap for this? Um, yes, this is pretty funny. <laughs> Okay, okay. Next news. Next news. The Allah Sox blasphemy scandal that is rocking Malaysia. The sale of socks featuring the word Allah at a KK Supermart convenience store on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, has sparked outrage among the country's Muslim majority. The store's CEO, Chai uh, Ki Khan, and other executives were charged in court with deliberately intending to hurt religious feelings over the incident. According to Malaysia's religious affairs minister, Mohammed Naim Mokhtar, the association with, of the word Allah, which Muslims see as referring to their creator, with feet is highly insulting, stating, quote, the act of putting Allah at our feet is an insult. The case drew a rare rebuke from Malaysia's king himself, who called for an investigation and strict action against any guilty parties. Malaysia is a multicultural society, but religious issues remain highly sensitive, highlighted by this controversy over just 14 pairs of offending socks sold during the fasting month of Ramadan. So this is, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, I oh mean, I'm trying to think of a good joke right now. I lost it. Basically, Armin, if, <laughs> Shuvo, <laughs> oh no, he's saying, what about a lot of condoms? <laughs> My friend, <laughs> why? <laughs> why not? Um, 
Uh, so, Armin, if you scroll down a little bit, we can see a better image of the socks in question. Um, wow, down. this okay. is like, look at this. People, this is on the news. People are. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Can oh, yeah. Somebody this make this was actually like a toy? really big deal. This was this was where, huge news in Malaysia. So you know, go this, to the RT segment. Yeah. And if you play it a little bit. um. It'll it'll show a really zoomed in photo of the song. You want me to, to with with audio or without audio? Yeah, no, just full screen it right here so we can get a better picture of the socks. Okay. Oh. Oh. Wait, it's all cut off. There we go. Okay, yeah. now we can see it. Now we can see it. So I'm 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 like I have serious questions about like what happened here because this came from a Chinese manufacturer slash supplier, and I'm like, so is this an instance of, of them of like wanting to create like fake Adidas socks or something and just like slapping a random word on there and just going with it like because I'm not only does it say a lot in English but the shapes of the bars around it also look enough like the Arabic right. Um, so that makes it seem more intentional, but oh, yeah, you're like, right. How did this the happen? Below it, the thing below it looks like you're right. I didn't even notice that. That looks like Allah. I don't think they, it, this might like, be an accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is this? It, what is manufacturing? Or is this intentional? So, what happened here? Is this an instance of like, you know, this is pretty common where you just put words in a different language on some shirts and call it trendy or whatever? Um, like, is, is that what I mean, happened the, here from the Chinese supplier? Stuff like this comes at stuff like this comes out of China all the time. Like this happens all the but time. An, or or who had the balls to do this in Malaysia? Guys, do not forget that Atheist Republic was mentioned before no. the United Nations because our Atheist Republic members in Kuala Lumpur posted a photo on Facebook and then the government freaked the fuck out and was threatening to hunt down and kill our members based in Malaysia. And because of this, the Center for Inquiry had made a statement before the UN about the incident. Yes, that's how that's and how big it's first... up. They want remember Armin when this happened in Malaysia, they wanted to ban all of Facebook from the yes, country of when they re guys atheist Repo a minister a, a deputy minister in Malaysia asked in their parliament in their Congress or whatever, right? They asked if they could ban the entirety of Facebook on Malaysia because of atheist republic. This is we have this in our history. If you didn't know that, also I got my first uh, threat of beheading from Malaysia because of this. If you guys didn't oh, know, oh how that. cute, <laughs> cute. Yes, yes, yes. I got my <laughs> first threat of beheading from um, Hindu fascists. The, yeah, the first people to threaten me with death were Hindus. I was not expecting that. Yeah, that was, that's quite a record. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, um, this is like guys. It, we're not lying. This, Go look it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We managed to hit a couple of records in Malaysia and in India. We managed to hit a couple of records, like in Malaysia, because of Atheist Republic. Athe atheism was mentioned for the first time in the Security Council of the United Nations for the first time. Okay, and Malaysia um, announced that they want to ban the entirety of Facebook for the entire time uh, for for the, for the entirety of Malaysia. So that's. Um, two records that we set in Malaysia in India, Atheist Republic has set two records because atheism, because of uh, us like taking depicting uh, the Hindu go uh, goddesses, we were atheism was brought to the um, the Supreme Court of the entirety of India. Okay, so in Supreme Court of Delhi and Supreme Court of India, our case was brought there, and also also atheism as a whole was uh, trending. For the first time in India, so that was two records that we hit. Yeah, we. we <laughs> this is weird things to brag about, but okay, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, who, you Go know, with you. that history and those those attitudes being the being present, who would intentionally do this in Malaysia? 
Like, how did this happen? Well, I mean, have you seen products coming out of China? Like, this is this doesn't surprise me at all. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I mean, should I? No, uh, okay, Armin, I get that point. But there were there had to be, like, people in Malaysia making the decisions to put this in the convenience no. store. Was there just no mm. oversight? You know what I mean? No, there's no oversight. Like, look at Holly Station or Sunbox Coffee or iPhone Shoes. Google, look at this. Google, Google toilet, toilet paper. paper. Sick. Yeah. Bain, look at this. Binbos but instead of Windows. Binbos. Right? <laughs> So the, I mean I'm afraid to go down. Let me see if it's safe to go down. Um I mean it, it, China is full of stuff like it's like famous for just stuff that is like random stuff that comes out of let me see what else. Look at this. Like we have Nake. Anyways, look at this. Look at this McDonald's size. Down here, I love it. They're like, like uh -huh. instead of two arcs, it has three arcs. Oh, okay. instead of KFC, we have KFG. I don't know. So I wouldn't be or, surprised. No, I, Armin, we're missing it. We're no. missing it. We're missing it. We're missing it entirely. Okay, this is an extension of the atheist, the state atheist. Oh, Wait, you know, domination of religion. This is all intentional. And this is showing China's war against Islam. That no one seems to notice, by the way. <laughs> um, but, but this was legitimately believe... really big news in Malaysia. Really? This okay, well. Okay, guys, I please, 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 please make Allah and Muhammad sex toys for them for Muslims to be desensitized about socks okay somebody somewhere make dildos with the muhammad right at the tip so that when they see that next time when they see a sock with an allah on it they're like okay this is not something to get out outraged about because we already seen dildos with muhammad at the tip okay so somebody somewhere please make a dildo with a muhammad at the tip well have we been demonetized by the way yeah thank you <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yes, we have. We have been demonetized. Oh, so, joy. Shocking. <laughs> so Guys, please like the stream so that we could um, at least not get deprioritized while we get demonetized as well. So, oh, wait, I forgot to say, I forgot to show this. And it's gone. It's gone. And it's gone. Yeah, exactly. See the web things. <laughs> and I'm here. All right. So um let's go. Are we ready for the next news? Yes, we are. Oh wait, we have super... this is not super fun. Super chat. Oh, we do? Okay, so no clapping. Okay. But we have some super chats. Okay, okay. Let's go through the super chats. Um Erkin gave a super chat, but he's addressing someone else in the live chat. So this is completely out of context. But thank you for the super chat, Erkin. And GJ yes. gave a super chat saying, guys, last year I repeatedly asked for a Q&A free format with Armin and Susanna at Europe, European, Middle Eastern, African friendly times. Perhaps tack it on to the end of the now only two hours long news show like for one hour okay gj respectfully i work a full-time job i already exert many 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 hours throughout the week doing all the maintenance stuff for atheist republic and i appreciate your support but i'm gonna be honest you act very entitled and not considerate towards the fact that i have a life <laughs> And we want to be able to do Q and A's, right? But literally, we were just talking about how I have so many, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Demands on my time 
that literally everyone else in my life can talk about how they tell me I work too much and I work too hard, that I don't have the luxury of being able to do this. So I would love to do Q&As, but your attitude, I'm finding very disrespectful. I'm just going to be honest. But I, I appreciate that you want to see more content from me. I do like that. But I'm just being honest. Um, so Angie also gave a super chat saying socks and dedos in the store of our atheist land. <laughs> Do we just have a most <laughs> blasphemous store? I the should security have on that store. You're right. Okay. From now, from now, I will say dedos. And after that, I'm saying the L, the L is missing. Yeah. I should have done that. Because I don't think now, because I said that, I don't think I will be able to get the monetization even back. I should be more careful. But it's, it's okay. Angel has covered us. So we're fine. And Shami is saying, I can say from my experience last year that managing a full-time full job and volunteering is too much. Respect for all that you do, Susie. Thank you, Shami. That actually means a lot to me. Yes, guys, um, say stuff like that to Susie. She needs it. She does really need it. Because not enough people appreciate what Susie is doing for for us thank you for saying that yeah it's oh yeah don't even get me started we'll get a super chat no one can be as hard on me as I am to myself um Shuvo oh Shuvo my friend I miss you gave a $20 super chat thank you that's so generous saying so that the atheist republic army can wear Allah socks and fight slash play with our <laughs> Muhammad Delta. <laughs> <laughs> what I, I'm surprised should we, should YouTube did that super chat. Apparently, there were only 14 pairs of the socks in the Malaysian super art market. So, what do we have to oh, do wow. to go find those socks on eBay? If we oh, find wow. them, Shugo, I will spend your twenty dollars on the socks. <laughs> I don't think I think it would be more than twenty dollars. Wow! So Malaysia, what a pathetic country that it could be taken down by like. 14 socks like this is this is the threat to your nation socks okay the patheticness of your religion and the fragility of your country at the same time marketed to the entire world thank you for letting us know um oh thank you for all the support everyone it's very sweet okay. um so let's go to the next story um, and this is not something that, uh, <laughs> I would work full time and do volunteering for them socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, before you get market to the next value story, of I... these socks is skyrocketing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I see, you know how many people are watching us? You don't see it on YouTube, but 656 people are watching the stream. Okay. 200 of them on YouTube, 400 of them on Twitter. So first of all, people who are watching on YouTube, do not forget to like. Shame on you if you're watching us without liking. It doesn't cost you anything. It literally takes only one second. So please like the stream. It really does help us out. So please do go ahead and do that. Also, the people who are uh, watching us on uh, Twitter, please make sure you come and watch us on YouTube as well. Come subscribe to us on YouTube, okay? Because on YouTube, is that's where Atheist Republic, search for Atheist Republic on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's where you get to be participating in the live stream and your comments get highlighted and stuff like that. So please go ahead and come here. We, we would like to see the live chat in the uh, on YouTube to be very busy. A lot of people are talking among themselves, their opinions about it. So it's a lot more fun here on YouTube. So hop over to YouTube. Okay. So we are going to, okay, you said this one is not, oh, we got another super chat. Let's do this one. Oh, my goodness. And then we'll go. Uh, Trails, thank you for the super chat, my friend, saying, on behalf of the Kingdom of Denmark, this is a public service announcement for an, al another alternative to the anti-Semitic loon, Mia Khalifa. Look up Yasmi Shirni. Yeah. Or excuse me, oh, Jasmine. Really? I can't, I'm dyslexic. Well, no, no. As a gentleman of culture, <laughs> thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for the public service announcement. Oh, we got another super chat. Oh, thank my you. lord. Yeah. 
Why did you unhighlight it? Was that bad? Let me highlight no, it. No, no, no. That was an accident. Oh my god, Gajan, this is so bad. What is Gajan, thank you for the super chat saying those 99 names of a lot of pine cones look like butt oh. plugs to me. Yeah, they you're do. right. Those yes. actually would translate very well. Actually, you're right. Um, because Ali Dawa always a, has them in the background. Of that's his what I always think. Like, yeah, I always, I, I, I didn't know what that was. I was like, does Ali Dawa has a, have a butt plug behind him at all his streams? And now I know what they are. So let me actually show it. This is what you're referring to. Hold on, let's go. These are the 99 names of Allah. And guys, we don't even need to. I mean, do they look rough? They, they do like kind of. No, this one looks painful. And if we find one that is smooth enough, it it is too big to for it to be a butt plug. But anyways, these are the 99 <laughs> Not for uh, some names people. of Allah. <laughs> yes, true, true. But if we could There's find a small version of it. And they're like, not only is this a challenge, this looks ideal. <laughs> Somebody make a smaller God. version of this. Also, maybe like some type of plastic that is suitable for it to be a sex toy. But yeah, this this could work. Yeah, just make a mold out of it, fill it with silicone, you're good. Yeah, okay. Check with check check with experts when sex toys. We don't want to encourage anything that is unhealthy for your butt. Okay, we don't know. We, me and Susie are not experts. Please be careful. Please take care of your butt. Okay, don't do anything that could cause damage. Okay, seriously, I'm, this is this part is not a joke. Okay, I'm serious. Don't put anything in your butt that could damage it. Do some research before you could do anything. Okay, like I just want to make sure we're not responsible for some <laughs> serious damages. I swear to God, there okay. is. There's some there's some sex toys that I legitimately think should be banned. Right. Because I'm like, you cannot tell me that any human body is supposed to be able to accommodate that and never be the same. That's a health hazard. The state the state needs to get involved. This sure. is an instance where the state needs involvement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't know. I don't think the state needs to get involved in your booty, but okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you do. <laughs> swear to God, I man. <laughs> Ocean Mist is saying, "Protect your booty," and somebody saying, "Thank you for the health advice." No problem. We're here to help. Um. Oh, we got some NES. Ivan gave us some Zionist Musad money, which uh, I it's six shekels. Which I can, you know. guys, send us six 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 shekels. Okay, that would cover all the conspiracy theories okay is there a way that shekels. i can play oh. audio without thank you showing visual because i really want to play the audio of the 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 metal hava nagila but i don't want to expose my messages with zaid <laughs> which is where i have the audio mm, no you have to no don't don't it's risky it's too risky it's too risky okay so we got another super chat let's read this one and then we'll go to the news GJ. thank you for the super chat gj Susanna, i'm sorry for my tone struck the wrong chord but i'm dutch thus blunt that is true that is true <laughs> you dutchmen are something else okay you know what it's not your fault <laughs> Further, i'm not asking Susie to work harder but smarter i understand and trust me if i was available to do that i would be doing that but I, I appreciate that that is something you would love to see from me. I actually do appreciate that. So thank you, GJ. And I, thank I, you, GJ. Apology. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, ne no clapping. Next news. Okay. Next news. Stoning and crucifixion. Yemeni Houthis sentence nine to death for homosexuality. The Houthi rebel group, the Islamist political and military organization that controls large parts of Yemen, including the capital, capital Sana'a, has sentenced nine men to death, including by the horrific punishments of stoning and crucifixion on dubious charges of homosexuality or sodomy. 
This is the latest in a series of mass trials and harsh punishments targeting the LGBT community in Houthi-controlled territories, just two months after the group sentenced 13 other men to death for being gay. According to Niku uh, Jafarnia, the Yemen and Bahrain researcher for Human Rights Watch, quote, the Houthis are handing down death sentences and subjecting men to cruel mistreatment without a semblance of due process. The Houthis are using these cruel measures to distract from their failure to govern and provide people in their, te in their territories with basic needs, end quote. Human Rights Watch's review found serious violations of Yemeni due process, including police failing to provide arrest warrants and unlawfully confiscating the men's phones, underscoring the Houthis' quote, abhorrent disregard for the rule of law, shocking from an Islamist, I know, as they ruthlessly crack down on LGBT individuals and areas under their brutal control. So I obviously... <clears throat> thought that this was a very important thing to cover and discuss for some obvious reasons. First of all, ooh, I could should I get a little bit spicy right now? I I actually yes, ooh, this is not what I was gonna say, but I have a little bit of a spicy opinion right now that just came to mind. Okay, and this is a this is a personal opinion of mine. But this is why I don't believe that there is an actual LGBT community in North America or one that has its priorities straight or has its head on straight. We, we, we work in ass backwards. Okay. Why do I say that? Because although there are still issues and discriminations and things that happen in North America, by and large, in most ways and places, we are equal under the law. There's some instances where there, there's some things that could still be improved. But by and large, we are protected as equal citizens under the law, which is unprecedented. We have had record speeds of people becoming less homophobic in our societies to the point that now we are like looking for new ways to call things homophobic and act like a victim. And let me be clear, I am talking about the community in North America, I know this is very, very, very different in other countries. So my feeling about the LGBT community doesn't exist probably doesn't apply for other countries. Let me just clarify that. And instead of going, okay, we have come so far in terms of establishing individual liberties for ourselves as sexual minorities, because this is what LGBT rights should be about. It should be about the protection of individual liberties. But we strayed very far from that in North America. And so we should be going, okay, we have gone come so far in establishing individual liberties and protections for ourselves as a community. Where are we leaving other people behind in the world? But that's not what we do as a community here in the most, like, in the largest, most visible, most represented countries, in the most economically powerful countries, the most visibly represented, like, communities. Like, in my neighborhood, the sidewalks are painted rainbows. You're telling me we don't have representation? <laughs> <laughs> there are, of course, a lot of homophobia that still exists, but it is at record lows. Actually, that's not true homophobia is having an uptick in America. And I think it's because of the nonsense of our community. That's a different discussion. That's a different discussion. Regardless, what I'm getting at is we have abandoned our, the plight of our LGBT siblings, so to speak, around the world. When Uganda essentially implemented the death penalty for certain homosexual activities or acts, did you see outrage at large from the LGBT communities in the most powerful countries around the world? I bet most people don't even know that Uganda did that. Guys, if you did not learn this from Atheist Republic, did you know that Uganda has basically implemented the death penalty for LGBT stuff? Where is the outrage? Where is the mobilization? 
Where is the care? Yeah, Amir saying no. Do we talk about how gay people get hung in Iran? No. Like, do we do you hear mass mobilization, mass outcry, calls for international pressure when within the span of two months? We've had like around like 20 gay men sentenced to death through stoning and crucifixion in Yemen. No, no one hears about this. No one cares. Instead, we have progressivism, capital P progressives, mainstreaming, terrorist supporting. I'm not even going to call it sympathizing. I'm going to call it straight out supporting. When you have progressive activists and so-called queers for Palestine literally marching through the streets of major cities yelling, Yemen, Yemen, make us proud, turn another ship around, talking about their attacks on random ships in the Red Sea, not even realizing, I guess because they're maybe fucking idiots, that that's the wrong fucking sea. I mean, if you really want to cause damage to Israel's ports, they only have like one tiny port. <laughs> connecting to the Red Sea, most of it is going to be on the other side of the country. So instead, we're just fucking up, like, everyone else's trade. We're fucking up everyone else's prices on a global level. We're causing prices to rise for all of the global poor around the entire world because everyone has to completely... Um, change their routes because of the Yemen's, the, the Houthis, excuse me, the Houthis, just randomly attacking ships. And then if they like hear later that one ship, maybe one time was owned by a Jew, they're like, ha ha, we defeated the Zionists. Like, it's so fucking pathetic. Like, I heard that one time a Jew walked on that ship. <laughs> Israel defeated confirmed. Like, it's fucking dumb. But what do we get to see? What do we get? We get the so-called progressives praising groups that openly utilize child soldiers as, as heroes throughout the streets of our major cities. Do they care about this? They don't care at all. No care in the world. They probably don't even care enough to know that this happened. We're stoning and crucifixion. 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 What fucking century are we in? Are, are, you, are you out of your mind? I saw um, someone, uh, I think maybe it was Apostate Prophet, I can't remember. I think maybe like tweeting about this news and being like, this is what Islam uh, contributes to the 21st century. Crucifixion. We're going all the way back to biblical punishments, okay? Let's go back to how the Romans do. It's insane. It's absolute insanity. Um and this is why, like, the LGBT community in North America or the West has, like, zero moral legitimacy to me. If they want to talk about the basis of people not being persecuted for, like, if, if they're talking about defense of individual liberties, I'm fully on board. I'm fully on board. But we strayed away from that as the foundation of our movement a long time ago. A long time ago. For these progressives and these socialists and communists and anarchists, and I know this because I used to be one, I used to be embedded in these communities, I know their rhetoric, I know their orientations, I know their tactics, they love to talk about internationalism. They talk about internationalism all the time. For example, international worker solidarity international solidarity with all colonized people. They talk about this all the time. 
the LGBT community in North America seemingly mandates that you have a left-leaning political lens, which adopts many of these same sentiments of of solidarity across class lines, across identity lines. This is a basis of a lot of intersectional feminism, right? Um, Solidarity across different forms of oppression. But we have none. We do not consistently enact that as a community. So... It, it just really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. It really pisses me off. Because I have felt so alienated as a member of the LGBT community for a lot of the things that I believe, the causes that I care about, what I choose to speak out against. I get demonized. I get canceled. I get ostracized. I get shunned. Because I talk about some of the forms of oppression, if we want to go there, that our LGBT brothers and sisters face around the world. But because it's not by the right kind of oppressor, because I don't come from the right background, because I don't have the right skin color, I'm now contributing to that oppression. Because apparently, if oppression doesn't come from a white man, it doesn't exist. There is no oppression in the world that can it organically exists outside of being under the thumb of a white man, apparently. It's so absurd. It's so racist. I'm done with it. I can't stand it. And so for me, I'm like, okay, I just want to talk about what we can do in, as a community on the basis of individual rights. I think we should be really speaking out against what our, because I we have it so good. There's a lot of people that still suffer in our in our countries and our communities. There's a lot of mistreatment by families, etc. In we're we're doing the best out of everyone. I don't think that can be argued against. So why don't we turn around and actually talk about how people are suffering around the world? But that's not that's not okay. That's not acceptable because that's not my lived experience and that's not my place and all that bullshit. Just silencing, censoring, shutting down of critical thought. I'm done with it. D is saying it's a free Susie rant. Slip that in. I know this, you know, the Susie rant might have come early this week. I think the Susie rant came early this week because I was not planning to go off. <laughs> Anyways, let's uh <laughs> enough with my rambling. <laughs> Armin, do you have anything to add? Nope. I, I just wanted to address I didn't know this is still a question here. I thought people knew Susie. Do you want to address this? Um Mr. Garak is saying our community. I thought she had a boyfriend. Um, Garak, I am bisexual, and actually, the majority of the LGBT community is bisexual. Mm. A fact is that the majority of the LGBT community are bisexuals, but we are not treated very well within the community. Um, and I'm not we just only saying that from. For a while. I'm not saying that from personal okay. experience. I'm also saying that that's what the statistics show. I think it's very interesting that out of everyone in the LGBT community, bisexuals have some of the worst mental health outcomes. Um, anyways. Um, uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so we have a few a lot comments. Of people, a lot of people appreciated your rant in the live chat. People are saying epic rant, so that was good. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Well. Yeah. yeah. I'm just tired of it. Um, yeah. And GJ, excuse me, Gene is saying, yes, thank you. I was born in Russia. I know I would be dead as an openly queer person in my birthplace, but Americans are victims. <laughs> Exactly. And this plays into something I've been thinking about and wanting to investigate more recently, which is that a lot of progressivism is based on looking for new forms of victimhood because it's the only thing that makes them politically relevant and salient. 
because if you are not a victim, how are they useful? That needs to be unpacked. Hmm. Um, so Infinite Oneness gave a super chat and saying, why is this news not in the New York Times? Is this for real? Don't see this news. Um, to be fair, I don't actually know if this was posted in the New York Times or not. Maybe it was. I don't know. This I found this yep, article on um, actually an LGBT news website. Um, uh, ba 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 ba. Um, and um, then GJ gave another super chat saying, "I think I dropped oh, this you. once. I have a master's in social." cognitive and organizational psych Susie is working way too many jobs within atheist republic alone president ceo chief news editor weekly news host delegate there's a lot more i do besides this <laughs> no there's a lot more but guys yeah. delegation require here's the thing he says delegate okay gg delegation requires money okay we can't afford to delegate because we can't hire that many people to delegate so there's that. But thank you for the super chat. That might help us. Yes, actually. Thank you, GJ. Um, yes. And Baphomet Buster gave a super chat. Thank you. Saying full support to you at Atheist Republic. Keep going. Flex. And mm -hmm. please help build a bridge with French and Belgian ex-Muslims, ex-Jews, ex-Christians. I would love to, but I don't know a lick of French. And you know? my impression is that yeah. French-speaking people take their language very, very seriously. I think, and if I don't speak French, I don't know how I can build that bridge. <laughs> I think, I think, in the next couple of years, you're going to see live translations as we're having conversations. So I think that's going to be less of an issue going forward. So mm -hmm. we'll see where technology take takes yeah. us. Yeah. Um. I tried to learn a little bit of French when I was like in sixth grade and I was like, I'm not going to lie. I hated that language. <laughs> <laughs> hey, be careful. We're going to lose people. Shh. No, I mean, it was easier for me to learn Japanese in three different new alphabets than learn French for like one semester. <laughs> <laughs> um, I right now I, I'm focusing on learning Spanish and Farsi. Um, Drew gave a super chat. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> this is freaking gold. <laughs> Saying, I always uh, knew Ali Dawa had a pine cone in his butt. His pitch is too high not to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's good. Holy moly. Mm. That really got me. <laughs> okay. And he's proud of it. <laughs> proud of it. No, you have to say proud of it. That's and he's thing. proud of that. That's good. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Uh I can't I guess we can't clap for the next news. No? No. Yeah. I mean we can All clap right. because we're gonna freaking just talk shit about some mullahs like okay. so yeah that's the part we're clapping about okay all right cool next news next news for insulting the prophet iran condemns 64 year old to public hanging public hanging we went from stoning and crucifixion for being gay to public hanging for insulting some dude from hundreds of years ago who thinks he's the best of all men for all time. This is where we're at. In a chilling display of the harsh penalties faced by those challenging the Iranian regime, 64-year-old Shariar Bayat was sentenced to public hanging for insulting the prophet, a charge stemming from his participation in the 2022 women life freedom protests ignited by the death of Masa Amini. 
Bayat, arrested amidst the widespread unrest for uh, initially for propaganda against the regime, insulting Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei and spreading falsehoods on social media, was later condemned for his social media posts preceding the protests. This verdict underscores the relentless crackdown by the Tehran criminal court on dissent as Bayat's sentence sentences adds to the grim tally of over 800 individuals executed last year, underscoring the regime's brutal suppression of free speech and protest. His death sentence is the latest in a series handed down by the Iranian government to those arrested for their involvement in the demonstrations, highlighting a relentless pursuit to quell any opposition through the most extreme measures. So, Let's back up, provide a little background for those who don't know. And if you're on Atheist Republic, you you already know. So in 2022, in uh, September of 2022, there was a Kurdish girl. Her name was Masa Amini, and she was traveling to Tehran, and she was approached by the morality police for improper hijab. She was wearing the hijab. It was just not good enough for them. And in the process of her being detained, she was beaten so severely that she died three days later. And this ignited a uprising that was the largest threat to the regime's power since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. There were more um, like IRGC guards that were killed in this uprising than in any others before. Hundreds of civilians were killed, shot dead in the streets. Over 20,000 people were detained. Uh, there was well, 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 well documented uh, systematic RAPE of protesters, both male, female, and children. Systematic torture, systematic black zones where detained protesters would be taken to. Uh, I mean, where do we even go? close to, if not over, 100 children killed in this protest. Um, the IRGC ground forces were deployed upon civilians in entire towns. I mean, Kurdistan itself was under heavy bombardment. We're just talking like open full-scale war against like a civilian population. It was really, really bad. So, during... This time, immediately with around um, what time of year was it? Anyways, there were several. There have been nine protesters so far that have been executed for their involvement with these protests, and then this man, 64 years old, is now also newly sentenced to death, not only for his involvement in these protests against the regime's oppression, but also apparently for posts made preceding his participation in the protest, some which are somehow deemed to be insulting the Prophet Muhammad, which is obviously blasphemy, which is punishable by death, and also insulting, uh, you know, the Ayatollah Khamenei, insults against the regime, spreading propaganda against the regime, all those, you know, dissent thought-based crimes. Um, what exactly he did that was deemed as, like, blasphemous is not clear. I could not find that on English-speaking media about, um, the, about, about, about his crime and his, about his charges. So what he said, I don't know, because oftentimes what is accused of being blasphemous or insulting or insulting to Islam, blah, 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 is like super tame. And let's not forget that even if it was insulting against Islam, even if it was criticizing, even if it was mocking, obviously no one should be killed for this. <laughs> so Armin, have you heard anything about this in, in Persian language media? Yes. Okay, well, tell me what you know. There's very little in English. In the, on, the, on the Discord, on the, on the Persian discord server that we have a lot of people were talking about this and uh, they wanted us to bring they were asking me to bring attention to this and i mean you did it with even without my, me asking so thank you for that um i just want to address this first of all a lot of people might wonder why why because right now in iran there's a lot of hatred against islam more than 
any country in the world. Like there is not a single other country. Some people might say India, but I think in India, first of all, we have a, uh, I think the tension is between against the Muslims themselves, right? Against the, yeah. But in Iran, the tension is not against the Muslims because a lot of people, you know, are fa you know, the family members, the people who are against Islam, you know, they have also a lot of friends and family that are Muslims themselves, right? So I think when it comes to hatred of Islam as a religion, Iran is the number one country in the world. That's my, based on what I've seen, that's my belief. And this hatred for Islam, it's also a huge challenge to the Islamic Republic of Iran, the government, because more and more people are turning against the government to a point that if it's going this way, it's going to be almost impossible for the government to be able to maintain its power. So you would think, you would think that if you are trying to be preserving your power or trying to survive, you would tone it down. Right. There is if somebody is insulting the prophet or doing there's nothing. You know, we know there's this doesn't harm anybody. Right. There is. And we have this. A lot of us atheists are have this uh, wrong belief that religious people um, are just completely idiotic when it comes to their strategies and there's everything they do is completely stupid that there's no um you, but we think we mistake evilness with idiocy we think that if you're evil and you do evil things you also must be an idiot but that's not the case so i mean for a regime the islamic republic of iran has survived a lot of threats to itself for the past 40 years they must be doing something right they must understand how to survive so the question is why would they do this wouldn't this be a bigger threat to themselves, given that how many people that the reason why so many Iranians are now against the government is exactly because of stuff like this. This is what these this stuff has turned the people against the government. So you might you might think, why would they do this? Like I wonder if people in the live chat, beyond this, like, oh, these are just religious morons, because no, they know how to survive. So why, given that all the backlash against them, and especially at this time where things are so sensitive, where more people are turning against the government, why would they execute a 64-year-old man for insulting the prophet? Why not? Here, here's the thing. Even if you want to execute the man, why not make up and say that, oh, he was causing chaos? Like he was um, in the protest. He, I don't know, attacked... Uh, uh, our armed forces or something like this. Why do you insist on making it Islamic? And given that Islam, even, even this is not a security threat to the regime or something, like if somebody insult the prophet, like what is this going to do, right? So what is what do you think? Did, did anybody have any answer for this? I mean, I I know, but... Why? I have, my, I have two answers. One of them is to just show show force, show power, and to cause fear. Uh, the second one would be to signal to this tiny base that does still support them. That's like, okay, you, you perfect, exactly. Say. A lot of people say, well, Sharia says that. Okay, but again, you have to understand that Sharia is not the goal. Sharia is the tool. Religion, for a lot of people, if, here's the thing. If you are a religious uh, group, that the religion is the goal, you're not going to survive that long. You're going to be like ISIS, and eventually you're going to die out, right? For most people that actually manage to, more religious groups that manage to actually stay, get power and stay in power, religion is the tool, like it's the weapon. So it cannot be just because they're going to do everything that Sharia says, because the goal is to stay in power. The goal is to rule over people. So if it's a threat against their power, they're not going to do it just because Sharia says so. They're going to do the parts of Sharia that is going to help them. So it's exactly the two things that Susanna said. First of all, because they want to, because if it, it, a lot of them, not everything in the Islamic Republic of Iran, they, they're not all unanimous when it comes to their opinions. They are they're different parts of the Islamic Republic. Some of them agree with this, some of them disagree with this. Uh, they're all evil, but... Again, the strategy there's disagreement uh, within the within the government. But the one the, the ones who think this is a good idea, 
is because they want to show to the public that they're not going to back down, that they have teeth, because they, they still have power. They still can, that for you to be afraid, because they think that if they back down, it's going to signal to the people that their anti-Islamic protest, the anti-government protest is working. And they want to make sure that they do not show weakness to the public. And they also, I, I have been convinced, I might be wrong about this, that it's being unreasonable is part of the design. Because you have to be, they want to make you think that you don't know if this is going to happen to you or not. They want the randomness of it, the insanity of it, the it's being over something that you might have thought before that they're not going to execute over this. All of this is meant to think like, I might be next. This is, a, this is all chaotic. There's no order to this for you to be extra, extra careful about your behavior. So this is one reason. But the most important reason is exactly what Susanna said. The Islamic Republic has made a Frankenstein monster that is now coming after Dr. Frankenstein, which is a base that is insanely radical, and they want full-on Sharia, barbaric Sharia to the to to the to the max, as much as you can get, right? And did you learn nothing for- from the House of Saud? Look at what <laughs> <laughs> exactly, kind of like kind of like the relationship between Al Qaeda and Saudi Arabia. Spreading Wahhabism as a weapon across the world eventually came back and at the house of, um, the, you know, saw it, uh, itself, right? But for many years, these radical elements, you know, in the, that Islamic, the Islamic Republic had created used to be more loyal to the Islamic Republic, right? So if you, after the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran, we had two competing movements. We had the Islamic Republic spreading its or Khomeinism ideology across the world um, and the House of Saud as a reactionary movement to that spread Wahhabism across the world but the problem is that the Wahhabism turned on the, the House of Saud a lot earlier because they didn't have a good leash on it right uh, but the Ayatollahs in Tehran they had a stronger leash on the radicals that they were creating how uh, up until just the Maso revolution? So up until the Maso revolution, I would have said that the puppets of the Ayatollahs are a lot loyal, more loyal to the Ayatollahs than the puppets of the Saws. But the Maso revolution ended all of that, and the radicals that the Islamic Republic had created is now turning in, turning on the Islamic Republic for not being radical enough. And these are some hungry. Uh, radical, like they want full, on, they want blood. They are thirsty for blood, and they are think they think that the Islamic Republic of Iran is not Islamic anymore. They think that they're losing the Islamism of their country. So we have two revolutionary movements now being created in Iran. One is the secular anti-religious um, revolutionary movement, but now we have in parallel to that an Islamic revolutionary movement who thinks that the government is turning on them, the government is giving in to the people, the government is uh, being too mellow, is like just letting it, letting women not have a job, a lot of Islamic rules are not being enforced, and they are saying that if you, you should be more afraid of us than you are of that other revolutionary movement. Because they're saying the secular revolutionary movement, these are just kids that are just too... We can pathetic to fight. We have, we have been part of war. Like the the Islamic Revolutionary Movement, which are much lower in number, they they say, okay, we might be lower in number. But here's the thing: we have been trained in battle. One, two, we love to die. Like we are not afraid of martyrdom. The other secular revolutionary movement and in Iran. We love death more they than are, we love life. How can you defeat a yeah. movement that loves death? That's what they say. If you, this is what I hate, don't go listen to what these people say in English. Listen to what they say amongst themselves in their own language, and they say it plainly and they say it proudly that we love death more than you love life. And how can you ever defeat us when we love our own death? Sorry, I'm sorry right, to interrupt. Right. So the secular, the secular revolutionary movement in Iran, they are a bunch of life lovers. 
and they use life lovers as an insult, right? But we are, we are, and also a smear Muslim. against the Jews. It's also explicitly a smear right. against the Jews to call them life lovers. Right, right, right. But we love martyrdom. We love death, exactly like Susanna said, more than you love life. Uh, and they say, you should be afraid of us. And here's the thing. They, it's true. It's true. So he, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the popularity of it in Iran has dropped below 10%. Okay? Um, I, I'm guessing maybe around 8% or something, I think. Okay? But if that eventually gets to 5%, I don't know, 4%, it, it could, it's almost impossible to keep the government if it drops below that. So the, the, the remaining 8%, let's say 8% that the Islamic Republic ha has, um is i'm so sorry the remaining eight percent that it has is basically this religious maniacs and they are also turning on the government because it's not islamic enough so the islamic republic of iran it needs to satisfy these people and what i've but by the way i in the, these people that i'm talking about i am in their social media groups i am watching their youtube videos i'm in their uh, telegram groups I'm in their clubhouse rooms. I'm listening to what these people are saying, right? And the main thing that seems to satisfy them is blood. So executions. They want executions. So when you see during these executions... The, sorry. During the Masa yeah. Revolution, they were literally walking through holding signs in the street, literally asking the government why there is not blood running down the sidewalks. I'm not making yes. this up. They had hashtags. They had hashtags saying es execute more in Persian. Hashtag more executions. That's what they were holding. Um, and so, again, so when you see Islamic Republic of Iran doing something like this, they actually know what they're doing. They need these executions to survive. They are feeding their base. Anyways. No, I, mean, I completely agree. And I think that's like a really important way to to look at this did you um so for those who don't know we have a whole branch a whole arm of atheist republic that is in persian so if you speak persian go to jumhuri bihodayan and you can watch armin have some very very juicy 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 streams um mm -hmm. and we have a very very active uh persian speaking discord community with a huge very active community still living inside iran um so did you hear any more details about this case from anyone on the, the Persian community? No, this is like okay. completely behind Kurt. Like this is everything you said is all I know. So this is like not much more information is coming. By the way, thank you mm -hmm. for highlighting this because not many people are talking about this. So I really appreciate no, it. I mean, thank you. you know how I feel about how it's like so important to really, really boldly um, and unabashedly support people accused of blasphemy um, because we know how deadly it is. Um, and, you know, there were ex-Muslims in Iran executed, like, within the past year. Like, this isn't, this isn't hypothetical. We know that this threat is very, 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 very real. Um, right. But thank you for all that insight you gave us. Um, oh, thank you. What, actually, as a side note, I have a question. Um, what do you think about the crazy, crazy, very severe increase in uh, executions in Iran within mm. the past year, a year and a half? Um, like unprecedented, yes. like oh. record levels of executions within within the past year and so a half. Two points. It comes again. The, it ha it's happening because of the exactly the two things that we just mentioned. Okay. However, one thing I want to point out is a lot of the executions are of drug dealers. So there are the two executions that people pay attention, that are um, the two main executions that are happening in Iran, well, actually three, okay? So it's either because they're drug dealers, two, because they're murderers, three, because they are uh, prisoners of conscience, like prisoners who have um, ideological prisoners. differences. Or political, political prisoners, right? All right, so... Executions, executions in Iran are higher per capita than any country in the world, right? So remember these three. Number one, drug dealers. Number two, murderers. Number three, uh, dissenters, like people who are either anti-Islam or anti-government, the okay? This last one gets a lot of attention, okay? And the Islamic Republic knows that. Islamic Republic uses the execution of murderers and especially drug dealers 
with high volumes because they know nobody cares about them. And that's actually very dangerous. Um, the, if, the, if the Islamic Republic executes somebody because of Islam or because they're a political, they're, you know, they're part of the anti part of the protest, we come and support them. But the drug dealers and the murderers, like who would want to support a murderer? Well, I, I want to support a murderer, okay? Because executions are wrong. And because drug dealers and murderers, no, not that many people come and speak for their human rights. Um, the, but the high volume of executions is also a signal to the population that the government is strong, that the government doesn't care about your life, that the government does, is not afraid of killing people. And it does have, you know, a scare, it's a scare tactic that works. But it's important that we also speak for the drug dealers and the murderers, because I don't care if you're, you know, if you're a murderer, I'm against you, but you should be in prison forever, maybe something like that. I don't know. But you shouldn't be executed. We have to speak when it comes to human rights. We have to speak for the worst people. You know, it's not human rights is not a good human rights is every human right. Murderers do not deserve to be executed. Murderers should just go to prison. Drug dealers shouldn't be executed. Murderers shouldn't be executed. So it's important that we defend even the worst of people, which includes murderers, right? So yeah. we do need some more activism, just, just no to executions. Um, even if the Islamic Republic of Iran was not executing any political dissenters or anybody that was blaspheming and all their executions were drug dealers or murderers, uh, there should have there should be a heavy campaign against them because you know execution doesn't any the government shouldn't have the right to be able to just take your life away like that that's insane yeah i mean we don't have to be sympathetic towards them that's not what people are right. asking it's just like they do right. have rights um they have rights although there iran does have a history of executing women who were child brides at the time of their marriage who then ended up murdering their husbands who were abusing them there are many cases within the past few years alone of iran executing a lot of women who were survivors of child marriage who then went on to murder their abusers um in an attempt to escape and to go ahead and kill those women um because child marriage does happen at a surprising rate in iran I remember when we were looking up the statistics, Armin was like, no way. Like, you can believe it. Or how much yeah. honor violence actually still happens in Iran. Um, uh, so now it's time for some super chats. Um, Dana gave us celebrating her membership for one month. Thank you, Dana, for joining. Welcome to Satan's Minions, if I didn't say hello already. Saying, hey, Susanna and Armin, happy Saturday. Technically, it's Sunday, but I still appreciate it. It's the Thank Lord's you. Day. Come on, woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, this is a comment. Sar is saying uh, the Iranian regime would not have survived this long if it wasn't for Western appeasement. And I believe this more and more and more with every coming day. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, we got a super chat. Thank you from Cope compost the apr saying cracking jokes in the chat is the only thing making it possible to listen to this crap how do Susanna and armin stare into the void like this over and over and over all hail well i've been doing it for close to four years armin has been doing it for close to 20 years at this point <laughs> so i uh, really i don't know how armin does it but this is how i think about it because i know a lot of people we hear about these things. This is issues we care about. These are issues we focus on. And it can be so depressing sometimes. But the way I think about it is that no matter what happens, I spoke out regardless of the consequences or threat to myself over something I'm passionate about and have a sense of conviction over. And regardless of what happens, I did what I could to speak out against something I think is wrong. And then the rest is out of my control and I have to be stoic about it and I have to release it. But what is within my control is that I speak out, that I dissent. And I cannot play a victim because there are consequences to my life because of that. 
That's my responsibility. That's something that I chose. I can be frustrated by it. I cannot like it. Trust me, I don't love it. But I cannot pretend like I'm a victim because I made that active decision knowing full well what the consequences would be. I have to hold myself accountable in that sense. But I know within myself that I spoke out with the strength of my convictions and the rest is out of my control and my power. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Um, so next super chat is from GJ. Thank you, GJ, saying my two Iranian Dutch friends criticize Islam but still identify as Muslims. One spontaneously approached me to show me George Carlin's religious is BS skit with Farsi subtitles on her phone. You know, this is actually not that surprising to me. There are many people that actually have a lot of criticism of their own country, of their own culture, of their own religion, where they come from, but still identify that as part of their background right? Or maybe there are elements of it that they like, that they pick, that they feel a sense of closeness or familiarity to, but they don't have to love all of it. They don't have to subscribe to all of it. Or maybe for some people, it's more cultural. Like Ali Rizvi calls himself a cultural Muslim. There are lots of people that don't like that label, but there are some people that feel like that fits them the same way that Richard Dawkins has been calling himself a cultural Christian since the early 2000s. You know, so it's not as black and white as people think. You don't just plug the Quran into someone's brain and they operate like a freaking robot and just adopt everything and they're completely uncritical to everything. There are a lot of Muslims that don't like the behavior of their own community, that don't like the causes that they support, the stances that they take. It's to me, in a sense, it's not, that's not that surprising. Um, but, um, I do love the George Carlin with the the Farsi subtitles. There's oh my god! If do like do people in Iran know about George Carlin, Armin? Because like his his content and their specials, they would love him. Oh my god, that would resonate so much with them. Yeah, um, I see some of his work being with Persian subtitles. I've seen it. I don't awesome. know how widespread they are, but I've seen. Um. <laughs> Zane is saying 20 years. Sometimes I forget that Armin isn't. <laughs> You're the one that highlighted that. Is there something about that that you would like to I, address? No, no, I, just, I just wanted to take the compliment. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my God, Tema said Armin must have remembered when dinosaurs were. On. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. I'm. I didn't know we're getting to that point where we could make these jokes. But okay, I you're guess. the one highlighting it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you always get hit. Make jokes about your age. Should I start calling you right. Baba Bazorg? <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one? Pyramid, <laughs> pyramid, yes. Pyramid man. <laughs> oh, somebody, Muhammad saying, Armin, how old are you actually? Forty. I'm forty years old. Oh my god, so funny. Um, and Dana just gave us a super sticker with no comment. Thank Can you. you see what the super sticker is on your phone? Because we don't get them on oh. Streamyard. Oh yeah, you're right. Let me check. I have to scroll all the way up. Oh, it's a cat. It's a black cat. Oh, that's cute. Amichai is asking Baba what? Baba Bazorg, which directly translated means big daddy, but it is how people call grandpas. Yeah, <laughs> in Persian, in Persian, when you want to say grandpa, you say big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Okay, so we got oh. some super chats by GJ. GJ is saying, "At Armin, delegate to more free volunteers, hire, 
And also, thank you for the large super chat saying, oh, and when I suggest more Q&A time, including Susanna, it wasn't primarily for myself, but for A, the European, European Middle Eastern and African time zone world slash B, time for Susie to rant and unload and C, my own <laughs> off topic chats to be less disruptive. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I know that the demand is there. I used to have a lot more time to do a lot more Q&As, like about two years ago. Armin and I would do a Q&A basically every week. Um, but I just I just don't have time for that right now in my life. But I want to. Like, I do really want to. And even if, like, it's, it's not entirely about... Um, just having more volunteers and stuff, you know, outside of uh, my atheist republic responsibilities. Like I have other demands on my time, like personal matters and things. Um, and HG Drake just gave a super sticker. Thank you, Drake. <laughs> Thank Peter you. Bergenson is saying you technically say Big Daddy in e in English as well. Yes, Grandpa. Grand Potter. You know what? You're right. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Except the translation in Farsi is way more literally Big Daddy. And I just think that's so funny. Mm. What I love is that in Farsi, like, if you, their equivalent of calling someone like man in a slang way, like, come on, man, like, like that is, is Baba. So I, I love mm. just hearing like, my Iranian guy friends talk to each other and imagine that instead of calling each other like, hey man, blah blah blah, they're like, hey daddy. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> they're constantly calling each other daddy. I don't know. That's just funny to me. Um and uh what else? Oh, okay. So also Kurosh is saying, hey, we are almost at 50K. That is right. The Atheist Republic militia is growing. The army is growing. Our movement is accelerating. And that means <laughs> that if you are one of the hundreds of people currently watching us live on Twitter, you should come over and subscribe to us on YouTube because we do this all the time. You have to hit that bell notification so you know when we're going live because Armin is going live almost every single day. It's damn impressive. Oh. And and um, yeah, we make good no, content. You have to know when we're doing this every week. Yeah, yes. I'm doing actually like three or three times a week now because I'm doing nice. a lot more edited videos. But yes, and shorts. We're making a lot more short videos and edited videos. But yeah. But that is a good reminder for everyone to subscribe, to like subscribe. the stream, to yes. comment when the stream is done because it helps the algorithm because the only God that we believe in is the YouTube algorithm God. Yes. And <laughs> yes. Like, help us. You help send us. Your prayers with a like. Yes. A help comes. us tithe. Help us make penance to the algorithm gods. Zaid is also saying we are not an armed militia for legal purposes. That's a joke. Yes, but yes. for now, never mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. We also are. Um, uh, I I'm excited to hit that 50K, that 50K oh, mark. Oh, that's going to be huge because, guys, yeah. what you need to understand is like once you hit certain benchmarks with subscriber and engagement rates, it snowballs like crazy. So I know that yeah. once we hit some of these benchmarks, because a lot of people are like, you make such good content. You have such good commentary. Why do no more people not know you? Because we need to hit those benchmarks and hit that snowball, you know, and you guys can help us get there. Um, and also, if you want to support this show to make sure that we can continue to do what you do, we do you can support us with super chats or those little gifts on youtube or you can donate um in the the bar on youtube because the, the atheist republic is a 501c3 they they waive all the fees and stuff or in the description you can find um support for us on paypal you can support us monthly you can send us checks i mean we have a lot of options um because it is because of you guys keeping the show alive that we continue to do what we do and stir up trouble while we do it. <laughs> um, Armin, you highlighted this. Um, 
Oh. Johnny saying, Lord Jesus died on the cross for sinners and became alive on the third day. Is there something you wanted to address? Yes, I, I just want to say that uh, that's a breach of contract. Okay, because uh, <laughs> the, agree no, that, the, the agreement was that Jesus dies for your sin. Okay, so he should have just remained dead. So Jesus, if he mm. came back, if he if he came back from the dead, then Jesus didn't die for our sins. Jesus basically took a nap for our sins. Okay, the, the understanding is that Jesus will die, and my sins were forgiven. So given that he did not stay that dead, our sins are not forgiven, guys. Jesus breached the contract, the agreement that we have had. The whole thing is the whole thing is over. The whole thing is off. Your sins are not forgiven. And yeah, Christianity is, you know, nullified out of whatever. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. just wanted to make sure people um, understand it. So, okay, we have, oh, we got a few more things. Shami is saying a special show for 50K. We should 100% do a special show for 50K, Armin. We need to come up with some good oh, ideas. Yeah. Can we do, let's just do a Q, like GJ keeps wanting, asking for a Q&A. Let's do a Q&A for a 50K. If yeah. you have time. <laughs> special to it we can add something special guys when the stream is over comment what you want yeah. to see for our 50k special that's actually a great idea um and angel is saying at 50k i am going to give a 500 dollars super chat you guys are awesome wow. so let's 50k fast guys holy cow that's crazy think of wow. this as a matching campaign you know how they're like oh i will match you up to twenty thousand dollars blah 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 so you can double your impact now Thank that's what you. angel <laughs> is pledging to do right now wow and all you have to do is hit subscribe for free um baphomet buster also just gave us a super sticker thank you um gaijin american just gave another super chat saying <laughs> The Monkey King was trapped for 500 years so demons and Satan can reach enlightenment. Does that mean that we're going to unleash the Monkey King again at 50k? <laughs> and Wizard World, Wizard Words is asking for a Q&A at 50k. It kind of rhymes. And GJ is saying, thank you for the super chat, GJ. And in English, great grandfather? I guess a big, big daddy? <laughs> Um, All right. Ooh. We did it. Huh. Yes, we did it. Guys, again, I'm going to go, but don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification after the show is over. Make sure you leave a comment under the show. The comments really help us out, so please go ahead and do that. If you're watching this anywhere else other than YouTube, please come to our YouTube channel, Atheist Republic on YouTube, and subscribe to, uh, uh, to us on YouTube. And also... Uh, last thing, please go tell people, go tell your friends and your enemies to come and subscribe to Atheist Republic on YouTube. Word of mouth is the best way to grow the channel. It's very important. There's two things that helps the channel grow. The YouTube recommendation, that's what your likes and comments do, and word of mouth. Those are the two ways that the channel go, grow. So go please tell people. It has a huge impact. If you actually recommend the channel, people take that seriously. So please tell people to come and subscribe. Thank you, everyone. I had a fun show today. Yeah, me too. All right. Bye, guys. Mwah. Till next time.